Hello everyone. In this episode, we are going to uh, finish our discussion on choice and preferences by linking these two together. So if you remember, we started with a simple uh, example where the decision maker uh, or an individual has three alternatives, uh, facing three alternatives, and we were uh, to understand his uh, choice behavior, we were asking him a series of questions like what would you pick if only two of those alternatives are available? And then depending on his answers, we basically created a binary relation. And uh, in the example we uh, we discussed, the preference, uh, I'm sorry, the binary relation was complete and transitive. So we basically, after uh, we learned that we call such binary relations, given that they're also reflexive, uh, preference relations. And we know that the, in the example, <clears throat> the set of alternatives was uh, limited to three only, so it's a finite set. And because the preference, uh, the binary relation is a preference relation, we know that there exists at least one utility function that represents those uh, uh, agents, uh, 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 that those preferences. And so, therefore, we concluded that the agent's uh, behavior is consistent with a preference relation that is, uh, uh, and 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 a choice. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, let, let me take it back. So we, we, uh, we concluded that the decision maker's choice behavior is consistent with a, a binary relation that is reflexive, transitive, and, and, and complete. And, and so some of uh, textbooks call this as a rational choice uh, or rational behavior. All right, so we are going to basically uh, uh, argue and, and look at the details of all these arguments in a more general setup. So how do we start? We start with a, a mother set of alternatives X. X can be finite or infinite. And um, well, in the example we argued, we, we called the set of uh, uh, alternatives as A, but here in fact, uh, the agents may be facing with you know different sets of alternatives and so let's call this capital D as the set of all available the, the set of all subsets non-empty subsets of the mother space mother set X all right so this is 2 to the power X remember in the math review we uh, talked about this this is the set of all subsets of X and when we subtract the empty set that means D is basically a set of subsets of non-empty subsets of X. All right, so uh, therefore every element in D is a set, set of X, a subset of X, I'm sorry. So it has elements, all right? So, a, so X is, for example, A, B, C, D, E, all right? So A, for example, is just one subset of this set A, B, C. Uh, there might be B, which is like B, C, D, E. All right, so uh, there might be another set C that, that is A, C, and D. Or I don't know F, well, that is like only A and C and so on. All right, so D is the collection of such sets. Okay, very well. Um, now we're gonna define C sub this preference relation. We call it induced choice function. What does that mean? That means uh, this is basically the robot that we are building, all right? So we are building a robot, uh, a machine, which has a priority relation, which is exactly the same as this binary relation or preference relation. So what does that mean? That means this robot always picks the best alternative with respect to this uh, preference relation or binary relation, all right? So if this binary relation is something like A, B, C, D, E, all right? Well, then we tell C to pick an alternative from the set C, D, E, for example, and then the machine picks C because C is the, uh, the best alternative within, uh, within this restricted set C, D, and E. If we ask this, machine to pick an alternative from B and E, for example, it's going to pick B because B is the best alternative in the set with respect to this preference relation. All right, so that's the idea. 
Okay, and remember our purpose was relating a, a, an individual's choice behavior to more like a robotic behavior. I mean, can we do that? Why we want to do that? What's the motivation? Well, this robotic uh, uh, behavior, this transformation is basically telling us that, that this decision maker's choice behavior is, is actually predictable. There's a pattern in his behavior. And remember, we would like to understand the pattern in this decision maker's choice behavior. Okay, so now there's a... Uh, a very important uh, terminology. So we say a choice function C. Uh, oh, I, I, I forgot, I am sorry. So what is a choice function? So choice function is basically takes uh, a, a, a subset of uh, our mother space like A, all right, and then assigns one and only one, all right, one and only one element to this set. Basically, the interpretation is that the choice function is choosing this element we denote it as C of A from the set A. All right? That's what choice functions do. We give this function a set, a non-empty set or non-empty subset of X, and then the choice function basically picks one alternative from this set. From this set. That's important. Okay, so the induced choice function, as I said, it's sort of the robot which basically maximizes uh, the binary relation. All right, so we say a choice behavior, all right, a choice function, choice behavior uh, synonym. So the choice behavior of an individual can be rationalized, meaning uh, we can actually find a pattern. So, so we call it a rational choice behavior. If there exists a preference relation, I mean there exists a binary relation that is transitive, reflexive, and complete. Um, so we denote this preference relation with this uh, on X such that this, this choice behavior is exactly the same as this robot's behavior. All right? So again, think of the simple example of ABC. Remember? We looked at the choice behavior of the individual and then we found a complete transitive binary relation and then uh, we sort of plugged this binary relation into this machine robot and told it to pick the best alternative for given set of alternatives and so we said, well, you know what? This individual and this robot's behaviors are exactly the same in, 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 you know, uh, in, in, in this choice problem where the set of alternatives, the mother set of alternatives is X. So if we can find this relationship between the choice variable of an individual and, and, and this sort of robotic uh, 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 choice behavior, well, then we call this choice behavior as a rationalizable or rationalized or rational choice behavior, all right? Okay, so uh, there's an important condition. We call it condition alpha. It reads as follows. For any uh, set of alternatives A, B, which, is, which are subset of the mother space X, all right? For any A, B, if A is a subset of B and the choice function, the choice rule or choice behavior is basically picking an element from set B, which is an element in A, well then you know what? This choice behavior should be choosing the same alternative from both A and B. All right. So to visualize it, think about this example. So let's suppose this is the set B and let's suppose this is the set A, right? A is a subset of B. All right, so the choice function is picking C of B, which is, let's call this one, it is in A. All right, so it's not somewhere here, it's in A. All right, and then uh, the choice function, so that means what? We tell this individual C belongs to some individual. We, we, we know this from observing this uh, individual's choice behavior. And we observe him that when we give him a large set of alternatives, B, he is in fact picking an alternative from a narrower set of alternatives, A. All right? And then we say, hey, you know what? 
um, that means the other alternatives, meaning the alternatives here, are not so important for this guy, right? Because he's picking something from this set A. So now let's ask this guy, what would you pick if I gave you the A set? All right, so you need to pick an alternative from the set A, not from a larger set, but from a smaller set. What would you pick? All right, well, first off, by the definition of choice, right? I mean, if I told you to pick something from A, you can't choose something outside of A. That's out of question. But the question is, can I pick an alternative C of A, which is different than C of B? Well, of course you can, all right? Well, if you do so though, for some A and B, well, then that means you violate condition alpha. All right, so satisfying condition alpha means for every such A and B, the CA and the CB must actually be the same elements, all right? So CB is equal to C of A. Well, intuitively, what does that mean? That means uh, when I gave you a large set and you pick an alternative of uh, C of B, and then when I sort of narrow it down and, and offer you a smaller set, but still this, this alternative is still in the set, your choice from the B is still in the set, well then you know what, with, the, uh, with, with less choices, you shouldn't change your uh, attitude. Why is that? Well, because if you have picked this point, that means that point should be at least as good as everything else in the set B, right? I mean, that's, that's sort of the idea. So therefore, if I ignore all these points, well, that means this point is still at least as good as all the points in A, right? Because uh, previously all these points were still available, even, even actually more alternatives were available. And so therefore, you shouldn't change your uh, choice behavior. Um, you may say, well, that's a strong uh, assumption. Well, in certain situations, actually, that might be very strong uh, uh, property. And actually, uh, a lot of psychologists, behavioral economists later show that, you know, this, this condition is, 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 is violated in, in a lot of environments. Um, so I'm not going to make any arguments about this, but let's, let's stick to this. So there is such a condition. And then the next proposition is important because it basically tells the following. Look, if you look at a consumer, not a consumer, if you look at an individual's choice behavior, if this choice behavior is consistent with condition alpha, well, then you know what? This choice behavior can be rationalized, meaning there will definitely exist at least one preference relation um, such that this, the choice behavior of this individual and the choice um, behavior of this robot with this pr uh, preference uh, ranking or a priority ranking will exactly be the same. So that's what this proposition tells. So one, so let me read the proposition. Suppose that the D domain uh, of, of the choice function C uh, is such that for every A and B in an element of D, remember A and B are uh, subsets of X, and so they're elements of D. Uh, well, if A and B is in D, well then A union B should also be in D, all right? So what, what does that mean? That means for this proposition to be true, we do not actually ask this consumer, I don't know why I keep saying consumer, we do not need to ask this individual, what would you pick in this situation, that situation, like, all the possibilities, right? If the set has, for example, five alternatives, oh boy, there are like a lot of uh, subsets of this set, right? So if, for example, when we have three alternatives, A, B, C, well, they're basically uh, one, two, three, four set of, uh, well, ignoring the singletons, obviously, there are four uh, uh, subsets like A, B, and then B, C, and then, uh, 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 I'm sorry, A, C, and then the whole set itself, A, B, C. Again, I'm ignoring the empty set and the singletons because when the set is singleton, actually, there is no choice there. But if I have like, I don't know, more than uh, three alternatives, there's gonna be a lot of sets. So that means uh, observing the individual's choice behavior is gonna be very, very 
uh, difficult uh, business practice. So should I ask, what would you pick here? What would you pick there? for every possible subset? No, not necessarily. So the D has to satisfy this condition, meaning I can ask definitely much less question and still conclude whether this individual's be choice behavior is rationalizable or not. This is the first sentence means exactly this, all right? So for any A, B in this set D, A union B should also be in this set D. Very well. Then if, the choice rule or the, 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 the choice behavior of this individual satisfies condition alpha, well then C is rationalizable, which means there exists a preference relation on the mother set X such that C is equal to this robot C, the preference relation. All right? Um, so, so basically that's it. Um, the condition alpha is the summary of what uh, choice behavior is rationalizable, what choice behaviors are not rationalizable. So by looking at the uh, uh, choice behavior of an individual, by checking whether it satisfies condition alpha or not, you can basically, you can conclude whether this guy's behavior is rationalizable or consistent in itself, or it's not. So. Um, this is basically what we assume. We assume that uh, uh, the individuals in our models, like consumer theory, producers, in all our theories, the consumers or the, you know, the decision makers basically do satisfy condition alpha so that I can rationalize his choice behavior. So here is a very important point. The as if business. All right. Uh, it's, I think, very important to understand. Uh, do we really... Uh, so, uh, let's leave this to a next uh, video, okay?